Hello everyone and welcome to Meeting Jesus on Facebook Live. It's good to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us for the last two Meeting Jesus sessions because this is Holy Week, the last meeting week before Easter. And we said we'd do this series going up to Easter in this period called Lent. And we're nearly there. This is what we call Holy Week, the week uh, that leads us towards Good Friday. And finally, Easter Sunday, the best day of the year. And we're nearly there. And we've just got two more of these Meeting Jesus sessions. In these sessions, we've been following Jesus's journey to Jerusalem and to the cross in Luke's Gospel. Through the second half of Luke's Gospel, we've been looking at people that Jesus met on his journey to Jerusalem. And as we've met people that Jesus has met, we've been trying to see more of the character of Jesus as we've met Jesus for ourselves and we we spend a few minutes reading the bible a few minutes in prayer and if you want to share your thoughts please put them on the facebook here uh, or on youtube if you're watching this on one of the youtube videos uh, and then if you've got things that you'd like us to include in prayer nothing too confidential then please also put those on your messages and we can include them in our prayers or for those on on youtube we can encourage people to pray afterwards for things that you'd like us to pray for. We want to create community here through these Meeting Jesus broadcasts. Just today and Thursday and then these are done and we'll have to see what we do after Easter. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you're with us as we gather together in your name. We pray for every person who's coming together to gather to watch these Facebook broadcasts or the YouTube videos or however we're part of this today we pray that you may open your word to us speak to us and share your life with us in Jesus name Amen so let's get on with this uh, last week we saw Jesus meeting Pontius Pilate on trial in front of Pontius Pilate Pilate could find no wrong with Jesus and didn't know what to do with him but then he heard Jesus was from Galilee and that was his way out because Galilee was under the jurisdiction of Herod and Herod was also in town. So Jesus sends gets sent by Pilate to King Herod. Pilate was passing the book. He was a, a hand washer in chief. If he didn't have to deal with it, he wouldn't deal with it. Herod was around, so that's where Jesus went next. And in our reading, we read, we're, we're looking at just four verses of how Jesus was sent to Herod. So today we're in Luke chapter 23, verses 8 to 11. Luke chapter 23, verses 8 to 11. They're up here on the, on the screen if you want to follow them, or if you have your own Bible, you may want to turn to towards the back of Luke's Gospel. Uh, chapter 23 gives give you a time to have a look for that. And uh, the verses are now up on the screen. Let me read these verses to you. So, so Jesus has gone from his trial to Pilate with the Jewish officials all around. The Jewish officials have gone with Jesus, taken him to King Herod. This is what it says. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That's it, just those four verses today in this one of the briefest encounters we've had in our Meeting Jesus series. This is our reading for today. Jesus goes to see Herod. That word Herod strikes fear, doesn't it, just to see it. This king is not Herod the Great, the one who was around when Jesus was born. He died, of course. We know that it was safe for Jesus and his parents to go back 
to uh, into Israel because Herod had died not long after the birth of Jesus. So this isn't the one the wise men went to see, but this is one of his sons known to history of he as Herod Antipas. When Herod the Great died, his territory was, was divided out and this Herod took over as ruler of Galilee in the north. This Herod is the same man who put John the Baptist to death. Perhaps you remember that story of how Herod was involved in a scandal when he got married to a woman, confusingly called Herodias, who was a relation, a member of the Herod family. But this Herodias had just got a divorce from Herod's brother, also a relation, obviously. Herod's brother, who is confusingly known to history as Herod II, <laughs> um, was married to Herodias. Herodias divorced Herod II and got married to this guy, Herod Antipas. They didn't have many names to go around in those days, did they? Anyway, John, John the Baptist, criticised Herod, the Herod in these verses, for marrying his brother's wife. And with the connivance of the new wife and his daughter, John was killed. Now Jesus has to face the man who killed John. Luke in his gospel has mentioned this Herod once before, back in chapter 9, when Jesus sent the twelve out on a mission of preaching and healing, when he went public in Galilee, Luke tells us that Herod hears what's going on. And I've, I've got these verses to show you in Luke chapter 9, verses 7 to 9. It says, Now Herod the Tetrarch, in other words the ruler of this area, heard about what was going on. And he was perplexed because some were saying that John had been raised from the dead, John whom Herod had, had killed. Others that Elijah had appeared, and still others that one of the prophets of long ago had come back to life. But Herod said, I beheaded John. Who then is this I hear such things about? And he tried to see him. That's Luke 9, verses 7 to 9. So we know that this Herod was curious about Jesus. Was he John come back to life? Was he one of the prophets of old reappearing let's go back to our reading in chapter 23 verse 8 in our passage says this says that herod wanted to see jesus and see him perform a miracle for him that's what he wanted wasn't really bothered about finding out about jesus as as a, a, a prophet or a teacher or the son of god he wanted to see a miracle He'd been tricked into killing John by his new wife and her daughter. Perhaps he even had a conscience about that. Jesus was a man he wanted to investigate, to, 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 a curiosity he wanted to see. Who was this Jesus? What was it about this Jesus that excited so much attention? But Jesus in front of Herod remains silent. Jesus decides that Herod is not sincere, is not even as a sincere seeker after the truth as Pilate. Herod is actually the only person whom Jesus refuses to answer. And it can't have helped that it wasn't just Herod who was there, but he was surrounded by these religious council leaders who had come from Pilate to Herod accusing Jesus of a variety of a hodgepodge of different offences. This was never going to be a fair hearing. And then when Herod realised he wasn't going to get a miracle, he lost interest. Instead they start having their fun with Jesus. They find him a royal robe. Remember, Jesus was accused of being a king. So this word in verse 11 that says dressing him in an elegant robe, the word literally means a, a, a white robe, but it, it, it doesn't, it, we're not to take that word white um, literally because um, the word was used to mean a royal robe, a robe, a robe of elegance. That's how the NIV describes, decides to translate it. It was probably a, a robe from the royal wardrobe. 
interesting because Jesus indeed is king and they dress him like a king it's it's the equivalent of when they put a crown of thorn on his heads on his head it's as if they're saying here's our version of a king it's a mocking way of doing it but of course it is also the truth that Jesus is indeed the king the royal robe and the crown of thorns are showing that our Lord Jesus is indeed king just not the kind of king that Pilate and Herod assumed that he was attempting to be. But the treatment they give to Jesus here is degrading and humiliating. Herod and the soldiers and the religious leaders all stand in judgment on this man who claims to be king. But the truth is hidden in plain sight because this Jesus is the king who is about to come into his kingdom. This mockery led by Herod, judging this man, stands as a judgment not on Jesus, but a judgment on Herod and the religious leaders and the soldiers. With the judge of all people standing in front of them, Herod can only joke and poke fun. This is the cruel irony of all that went on in Jesus' trial before he Pilate, before Herod, before Pilate again, and before the Jewish leaders. The truth is there, if only they would open their eyes to it. What do we learn of our Lord Jesus here? We see him remaining firm and calm and in control, even in complete silence. As an example here to persecuted believers, those who face judgment even though they've done nothing wrong, to stay firm. Sometimes silence is the best response. When we face judgment and mockery, not many people where I live have faced persecution. Maybe some people watching this are in that position, but not many people in this country where I live or in most of the world have this level of persecution but some still do but even if we have what we might call opposition persecution judgment mockery we can still be like Jesus staying firm and strong and letting the truth speak for itself and sometimes the truth is just there under the surface but for a moment let's just turn the question around if you are the judge here what do you make of Jesus? Because the judgment you make will rebound back on you as it did on Herod and the religious leaders. He is the king. However much he is mocked, that mockery will rebound on those who mock and judge him. Soon he will go to the cross, but soon after he will be risen to new life and one day will return as judge of all. This is the king who comes in disguise, but comes still as king. I wonder what you see in this story. What is it in this story that perhaps leaps out at you? Let's have a look at if we've got any comments online. Hi to Beth and Rita those who are watching online, to Val, to others who are on our Facebook. Good to have you with us. Is there any way you feel God is speaking to you in this, uh, in this passage? Just a moment to put your comments down there online. We're going to finish in a minute. I'm going to finish with a short prayer. We're in the last few days before Good Friday and Easter Sunday these opportunities that we have to engage with Jesus, to meet Jesus, as our series suggests. Is there a way you can use this special week as a way to meet Jesus in a new way or to allow him to meet you and encounter you in a, in, in, in a, in a way that's going to challenge you or comfort you or strengthen you? Just looking again at some comments. Thank you for joining us today. 
And I pray that you will continue to engage with Jesus and to meet him and know him as judge, but particularly as king and saviour and the one who is there for you at this time. Allow me to lead you in a prayer. Let's pull aside a moment for prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you stood up to any mockery, any derision, any suspicion that was meted out to you. You remain dignified. You did not fight back, but you answered sometimes in silence, sometimes in simple truth. We pray, Lord Jesus, you'll help us. We pray you'll help those of us who are people of faith in the Lord Jesus, that we may be able to stand firm in our faith against those who would oppose us or mock us or deride us. And we pray that that derision and mockery may convince others to have faith in you. We thank you that you are truly king. Not simply the uh, inverse, the mockery of version of king that you were made to look like on that day when you were tried. Lord, be king in our lives and have your way among us, we pray. Lord, we pray for this world in need at this uh, Easter time. We pray, Lord, that you may come among us by your power, that you may heal the hurting, that you may strengthen the weak, that you may be with those who need you in special ways today. We pray before you for those who are on our hearts and minds for your care and, and love and attention. May the victory of Easter be with us and those who need you today. Lord, may your blessing of your word remain with us today and always. Amen. So I think that's everything from me today. Now we've got one more of these sessions. That's on Thursday, which is Maundy Thursday at two o'clock. And we're going to skip ahead a bit in the story because we're going to be meeting. Jesus is meeting with the thief on the cross on Thursday at two o'clock. Uh, also in our church, Trinity Baptist Church Gorton, we have uh, a service on Good Friday. That's on Good Friday at 10.45 and then a family service at 10.45 on Easter Sunday. Both of those not in our building, but online on Facebook and Zoom. So it'll be here on this Facebook page and also on a Zoom connection that you can get from me or you can find on our church website trinitybaptistgorton.org these sessions go on to youtube and to find them on youtube you have to go to youtube.com and then search trinity baptist gorton and you will find them there um that's this i think thank you very much for joining us today uh, there's also our phone message on 01615094409 other than that i will be back on thursday at two o'clock thank you very much for your company and uh, i'll see you then so for, uh, for now from me wayne clark bye bye and god bless bye